Hi everybody, welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is Pam. Uh, are we on part 8 now? It's pretty cool. I didn't even think it would get this far. Um, we have a lot to do. Starting with... Need something? Um, I want to know about Red Lyrium. Sometime. The red lyrium we found at the temple seemed to upset you. My brother Bartrand and I sort of discovered red lyrium during an expedition in the Deep Roads. We located an ancient tig, so old it barely looked dwarven. There was this idol there made of it. Bartrand brought it back to the surface, and well, everything's gone downhill from there. So what is it? Just another kind of lyrium? The red stuff is lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. What makes it special? Regular lyrium can mess you up pretty badly, but you have to ingest it for that to happen. Red lyrium messes with your mind when you're just near the stuff. You hear singing, get violent, paranoid, and then it does creepy shit. Makes things float, brings statues to life. It also turned Kirkwall's night commander to lyrium. Everyone's been kept at least a hundred paces from it since. How did the red lyrium get in the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I don't know. So as far as I knew, the only piece to make it to the surface was destroyed. And the location of the tig it came from is a secret. Did someone find more of it in the deep roads? That's not a cheery thought. I think that's enough on Red Lyrium. Yeah, not really my favorite subject. Need something? I've read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. What happened to the mage who destroyed the Kirkwall Chantry? The book never said. He fled Kirkwall with the mages from the Circle. Stayed with them a while. But he had to move on. Somehow a lot of mages blamed him for making them live as fugitives. I don't know where he is now, and I don't want to know. In the book, you say that First Enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses. How? Why? Do I look like an expert on magical weirdness to you? I can't tell you how, but why, all I can say is he was desperate. <laughs> There's no way Hawk really could have killed the Arishok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently the Arishok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall, and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. Where are the rest of Hawk's associates now? Meryl decided to look after the elves left homeless by the fighting. She's done a pretty good job of keeping them away from the mages and Templars so far. I guess she has plenty of practice avoiding stupid human battles with her old Dalish clan. Fenris has kept himself busy, hunting down the Tevinter slavers who came south to prey on the refugees. I'm not sure exactly where he is at the moment. You can usually follow the trail of corpses, though. Isabella went back to the raiders. She's calling herself an admiral now. I don't know if she's actually in charge or just has a really big hat. Might be the same thing, honestly. Hawk's little brother was off on some warden business near the Anderfell's border last night. Aveline is still guard, Captain. I'm pretty sure Kirkwall would fall into the sea if she quit her job. I love getting to catch up and, and see what happened, or at least hear a little bit about what happened to all the um, main characters from Dragon Age 2. Um, especially since uh, you do get to see Hawk later on. Where's Solus? You know, I know this game is kind of weird with loading its stuff in, but Solus should be around here somewhere. Oh, how about that? 
Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Okay, I forgot. I didn't replay this conversation when I Any had to go back and re-record that one episode. Dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. I thought you'd be more interested in sharing your opinions of elven culture. You are Dalish, are you not? What's your problem with Dalish? Allergic to Hala? They are children acting out stories misheard and repeated wrongly a thousand times. Oh, but you know the truth, right? While they pass on stories, mangling details, I walk the fade. I have seen things they have not. Fine, you think we're terrible. What about the alienages full of elves who aren't Dalish? Why? What would it benefit some poor man in a Ferelden alienage to learn that his ancestors strode the land like gods? It would only make him bitter, or inspire him to take a foolish risk and get himself killed. You've decided his reaction for him. Perhaps I have. If you have questions and believe the answers will help, ask. You'd like to know more about the elves from before our time? The Dalish strive to remember Halam Shiral. But Halam Shiral was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlathan. Elvanan was the Empire. And Arlathan its greatest city. A place of magic and beauty. Lost to time. You've studied ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlathan? We hear stories of them living in trees. And imagine wooden ramps or Dalish arabels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who live forever, for whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. Are all daily shells like my clan? My... No. Your clan is unique in having enough interest in human affairs to spare to send you to spy upon the Divine's meeting. As your, as your clans have been separate for so long, they have all changed, changed, adapting to the lands in which they live. Some are no more than bandits. Others trade freely with humans. And some have disappeared entirely to the forests. Oh my god, it's like a record skipping. This is so strange. What can you tell me about elves living in human cities? The culture in alienages, alienages or among the slaves of the winter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past and practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. Is elven magic different from the magic used by humans? No and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water, but it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical, not needing Chantry approval, although they still frown on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. Every time I've seen blood magic used, it has been for some evil purpose. I once saw a woman stabbed in the stomach with a dagger. She died slowly, in agony. It was repulsive. If the Chantry outlawed daggers, would that stop people from using them? Of course not. Some would use daggers in secret, ashamed, and some would find rebellion titillating, step down the path of depravity. So we should allow blood magic to be used freely. It works so well for the Imperium. The Vindus Foundation stones are the bones of ancient elves with slave blood for the mortar. It is an example of nothing more than gilded savagery. Pitiable in a way. They always succeed through power, for they have never had the chance to learn another way. 
Legends of Elven immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being Elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast. Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic and an unending symphony. It must have been beautiful. We'll talk later. Goodbye. <laughs> or you'll run right into me. As I explored the Fade, I felt the presence of an intriguing artifact in the hinterlands. If you are willing, I would like to locate it. I have marked its location as best I could determine. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Okay, hopefully that will give me the, um, the quest for the artifacts, like the one in Winter Watch Tower. But first we have to do this. Your kind killed the most holy. Lies. Your kind let her die. Shut your mouth, mate! Enough! Knight Captain! That is not my title. We are not Templars any longer. We are all part of the Inquisition. And what does that mean, exactly? Back already, Chancellor. Haven't you done enough? I'm curious, Commander, as to how your Inquisition and its Herald will restore order as you've promised. Of course you are. Back to your duties, all of you. It's just being very glitchy today. Um, I may end the episode just a little bit earlier so that I can try restarting my computer and see if that helps. Mages and Templars were already at war. Now they're blaming each other for the Divine's death. Which is why we require a proper authority to guide them back to order. Who? You? Random clerics who weren't important enough to be at the Conclave. The Rebel Inquisition and its so-called Herald of Andraste? I think not. I don't believe I'm Andraste's Herald any more than you do, Chancellor. That? Laudable humility won't stop the Inquisition from using the misconception when it suits them. The Inquisition claims only that we must close the breach or perish. You say that now, Commander. We shall see if the sentiment remains true. Remind me, why are you allowing the Chancellor to stay? Clearly, your Templar knows where to draw the line. He's toothless. There's no point turning him into a martyr simply because he runs at the mouth. The Chancellor's a good indicator of what to expect in Val Royo, however. My Templar. How widespread is the violence between mages and Templars? Possible to say. Your organization flouting the Chancellor's authority will not help matters. With the Conclave destroyed, I imagine the war between mages and Templars is renewed with interest. We know that. The mages and Templars are fighting, even though we don't know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. Exactly why all this should be left to a new divine. If you are innocent, the Chantry will establish it as so. Or we'll be happy to use someone as a scapegoat. You think nobody cares about the truth? We all grieve Justinia's loss. But you won't grieve if the Herald of Andraste is conveniently swept under a carpet. I'll make sure they see reason in Valroyo. I pray you're right. Unlikely, but we can hope. All right, let's see if, yay, Liliana's here. Blessed are the peacekeepers, the champions of the just. Blessed are the righteous, the lights in the shadow. In their blood, the maker's will is written. Is that what you want from us? Blood. To die so that your will is done? Is death your only blessing? You speak for Andraste, no? What does the Maker's Prophet have to say about all of this? What's his game? How is this a game? Do you see the sky? What about the temple ruins? 
the bones lying in the dust. Even if you didn't support the Divine's peace, you wouldn't call this right. Who could? So many innocent lives, the faithful murdered where the holiest of holies once stood. If the Maker willed this, what is it if not a game or a cruel joke? I speak for no one but myself, and I have no answers for you. You probably don't even worship the Maker. Lucky, he asks a lot. The Chantry teaches that the Maker abandon us. He demands repentance for our sins. He demands it all. Our lives, our deaths. Justinia gave him everything she had, and he let her die. I'm sorry. Her death has clearly hit you hard. Not just me. All of us. She was the Divine. She led the faithful. She was the heart. If the Maker doesn't intervene to save the best of his servants, what good is he? I used to believe I was chosen, just as some say you are. I thought I was fulfilling his purpose for me. Working with the Divine. Helping people. But now she's dead. It was all for nothing. Serving the Maker meant nothing. Maybe you have another purpose. I could help you find it. No, this is my burden. I regret that I even let you see me like this. It was a moment of weakness. It won't happen again. Come. To work, then. We will speak later. Arnon doesn't believe in the Maker, but he's not going to disparage somebody else for having those beliefs. I'm going to wait here just a moment, because see that scout who's awkwardly making his way around? He's coming over here. So it's true. Butler has stand on us. I hope my hunch was wrong. You knew him well? Not as well as I thought. Show me the report. There were so many questions surrounding Faria's death. Did he think we wouldn't notice? He killed Faria, one of my best agents, and knows where the others are. You know what must be done. Make it clean. Painless if you can. We were friends once. Wait. What are you doing? He betrayed us. He murdered my agent. And you'd kill him? Just like that? You find fault with my decision? We can't solve our problems with murder. And what would you suggest? Leave him be. Butler's betrayal put our agents in danger. I condemned one man to save dozens. I may not like what I do, but it must be done. I cannot afford the luxury of ideals at a time like this. Now is precisely the time for ideals. You feel very strongly about this. <sighs> very well. I will think of another way to deal with this man. Apriand Butler, but see that he lives. Now if you're happy, I have more work to do. It's an interesting little scene. I also love how she's A, standing on that pot, B, looking at absolutely nothing on that table. Hopefully that's just a loading issue. Um, she uh, can be softened, which I didn't know the first few times that I played through until I was reading something about it. So um, it's good to know that you can actually change her opinion later on, especially if you want her to become the Divine. Okay, before I do anything else... I still need to talk to Josephine. Oh, there we go. Okay. The Inquisition cannot remain in prison. If she can't prove, it was founded on Justinia's orders. This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked his life to slow the magic of the breach. Master Lavelan, this is the Marquis Durelli. One of Divine Justinia's greatest supporters. And the rightful owner of Haven. House du Elion lent Justinia this land for pilgrimage. This Inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denham, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelta. We were honored to lend its use to Divine Justinia. She is a she was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. 
Interesting, considering the Inquisition was begun by the left and right hands of the Divine. I've seen no written records from Sister Liliana or Seeker Pentacles that Justinia approved the Inquisition. If you won't take her at her word, I'm afraid Seeker Pentagast must challenge him to a duel. What? It is a matter of honor among the Navarans. Shall I arrange the bout for tonight? No. No. Perhaps my reaction to the Inquisition's presence was somewhat hasty. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montilieu. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. How gracious of you. Do the Durellions actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durellions are Orlesian. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. Yeah, just a bit. I'm so pleased the Marquis isn't tossing us out into the cold. His grace is only the first of many dignitaries we must contend with. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orlé. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montillier. Thank you. Let us hope so. Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. <laughs> She's such a diplomat. Agitated. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, there's a little book over here that I'm just going to pick up for the, the XP, but it's about the children of Andraste. Um, and basically Andraste, Andraste and Mafres 5. Um... They basically split Southern Tevinter among the three of them. Isarath has had Orle, Evrion had the Free Marches, Verald was given the Central Planocene, which is today Navarra. Um, the majority of claimants to Andraste's bloodline linked back to one of them. None of the three sons, however, were born of Andraste. They were born of the betrayer's concubine, Gilavan. Um, people overlooked the fact that Andraste was actually Alamari. And... Uh, the Alamari, similar to the Avar that we see later on. Um, after her death, the sons were raised as Andraste's own. She also had two daughters who actually were Mafras, Evers and Viviel. Uh, yeah, I'm stopping. But it, it's interesting stuff. Um, just too long to read right now. I'm going to turn in some research. Yes. Good. Which should finish a quest. Yes, there we go. Level five. Um, I loved getting the those uh, dream rags and stuff. The only downside is that they do take up inventory space, unlike quest items. I do need to stop. I'm gonna just see if I can talk to Mother Giselle here. Which yeah. How far is your quest to seal the breach? Oh, you know. Aside from this I'm tedious doing waiting, within my power. a task such as closing the bridge is a heavy burden. I hope you do not carry it alone. We remember Andraste, but Andraste did not carry the chant of light alone. She had generals, 
advisors, and though it is considered heresy to say it, she had the aid of the elf Sharper. Do everything within your power, but remember those who would help you. You keep talking as though I'm the equal of Andraste. Do you know how unnerving that is? I can only imagine. But we are all given to our purpose under the Maker. A sword does not ask to be forged. And frankly, if such a comparison gives you pause, I do not see that as a bad thing. In any case, I pray this Inquisition proves less brutal than its predecessor. Is there anything I can do to help you or your people? My healers would benefit from more supplies. We have run short of even common goods with so many wounded. If you could deliver this list and the items on it to Quartermaster Thren, she could get us what we need. It may not seem like much, but it would enable my healers to save many lives. Farewell. Until next time. Okay, we're just going to come in here since I still have a few minutes. I have a kitten on my chair with me. If you talk to Mother Giselle, she has lots of interesting information about the background of the original Inquisition, history of, of Ferelden, all kinds of things. Um, I may not go through all of the dialogue trees with everybody, but I'm just trying to hit the major ones at least. Um, first of all, Did you see the we have a perk. Sent? Yes, thank you. And... And even tailoring is certainly nice. Um, connections. Connections is nice for later. Um, especially if you want to open up that vault underneath Skyhold. Secrets is probably what I'm going to go with. Um, I like eagle-eyed, but I also like optimal cutting. But later on I have to get deft hands fine tools so I can get into certain... Uh, places that just can't be unlocked normally. So I think, yeah, I think I'm going to get eagle-eyed for now. Okay, so now we have more stuff here. Finish this one. This is the, the asshole lord that I sent Cullen to help the refugees with. Address a nobleman's concerns. Commander Cullen, I might understand you were in charge of the soldiers trampling on my lawns, providing food and refuge to the scribble of filth burrowing into my land. A plague on you, sir, for spitting in the face of an honest petitioner, for taking advantage of my distress. Did my wretched neighbor, Ban Traft, whisper in your ear? Tell me what he paid you so that I may at least know the price of tr the treachery, sir. My only consolation is that a few of the rank and file have gone to join your farce of an inquisition. In bitterest disgust, Lord Kildarn. I get influence for that. I thought I sent somebody for the Tarn. I guess I didn't. This was the vigil in High Ever in the in remembrance of Justinia being held by Fergus Kuzland. I know I talked about it. Um, All right. I must have forgotten to just send, actually send the thing. Uh, I need to do contact Clan Lavellan. Oh yes, okay, this was a finished. Contact Clan Lavellan. Delen, Andoran Adishan, it does my heart well to hear that you are safe. Our clan was visit visited by members of the Inquisition who spoke persuasively of the good work you were doing, as well as the fairness with which our kind have been treated by the Inquisition itself. You know that Clan Lavellan has little by way of gold, but I gave the messenger some of our healing herbs, as Silas blessed us with abundance in our recent foraging. We would be a distraction if we came to the Inquisition itself, our hunters arguing with the humans as they so easily do. Nevertheless, if you need aid, send word and we are with you. Dareth Sheral, Keeper Istamathoriel Lavellan. And I got some Blood Lotus. Yay. So that's pretty much all I can do right now. At least on this side of the board. I can open up the Storm Coast. And I can open up um, the Falamire. I'm not going to bother with either of those just yet. Because what I need to do is go to Orlais. And we're going to get a present for Bianca. Liliana. Heard your little birdies have had recent success picking up shiny things for the Inquisition. Maybe you can help me out. One of the apprentice smiths saw me walking by with my Bianca, and we struck up a conversation. The apprentice said he once met a Formari mage named Provident, who had ideas for improving the pre precision of siege engines, and wondered if they could be adapted for Bianca. And then he got into phrases like recoil dampening and rectilinear motion, and I politely excused myself. Could you tell your magpies to keep an eye out for Provident or his designs? Obviously, I don't have trouble with Bianca's accuracy, but she does like it when Daddy gets her new fittings. 
Varric. And Liliana's the only one we can send on that. So now we are going to go address the Chantry. The Chantry, the Chantry, Chantry in Valrio. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempts to gather allies against the breach have been re rebuffed, and at this moment we could not step foot into the capital without being attacked by a mob or arrested. We must convince the Chantry to permit us entry into the city so we can show them the Herald of Andraste is not the monster they believe. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask him. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry says. I will go with him. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. And I believe this is going to take us right to Val Royale. The Breach. What does it mean to pierce the veil, that which separates our world from the realm of dreams and demons? For the average man and woman, it's a frightening thought to consider just how fragile the separation actually is. The veil is not a physical curtain, not a structure limited to a particular place. It is everywhere. It is in their home, in the streets where they walk, in farmers' fields, as well as remote mountain vales. At any moment, it could be torn to shreds, allowing demons and other horrors to flood into our world, like water through a burst dam. Known lore tells us, that, tells us a small rift can be sealed, but what about a large one? What if some catastrophic magical event created a rift so large and horrific it weakened, weakened the integrity of the veil as a whole? Such a breach would threaten our entire world, turning concerns about occasional demonic intrusion into a charming anecdote compared to the monsters we would then face. If there is anything to be done, any reason we should look at magic with fear, it is for that possibility more than any other. From the True Thread of, Thread of Magic by Lady Seeker Alondra Veil. Vale. Veil? Vale. Hmm. Uh, foot Soldier. An excerpt from A Meditation Upon the Use of Blades by Swordmaster Massage de Jean Mien, which I'm probably horribly massacring the pronunciation of. Required reading at the Academy des Chevaliers. Healing potions are shared among the entire party. Okay, so we had a lot of information there. Um, and... Now I'm just waiting for this to load, like always. Oh, this mentions Ash Warriors too. I have faced Antivan Duelists, Ferelden Ash Warriors, and Fog Warrior Skirmishes. Fog Warriors are, um, not Arvalin, um, that island that Fenris was on. And I know I'm going to get the name wrong, I feel like it's Sahedrin or something like that. When we strip away the titles and tricks, they are simply men who want to see their enemies dead, but need a hand free to manage it. Duelists favor a thinner target over the offensive strength of a main gouache. Gauche? Gauche? Ash warriors need a hand to guide their mabari and a lighter weapon to take advantage of the openings their dogs leave, while fog warriors rely on stealth and speed too much to use a heavy shield. It was Saharan. Um, when engaging with such an opponent, uh, with such an opponent, Respect his speed. His hands and feet will move a great deal. Ignore them. Watch his hips and shoulders instead. First deny what advantage he has in his allies or environment, unless you have trained equally in such matters. Once you control his weapon, overwhelm him. He has no shield, and you need not fear a second blade. If forced to fight in such a manner, you must decide whether you will fight as duelist, one-handed, or as a chevalier. If the former, drop your back leg away to tighten your center target, as you have no shield to cover your body or a second weapon to bring into range. Focus on a quick attack and give ground freely when you cannot find an advantage. 
If the latter rely on your van brace and gauntlet as a shield and try to wrench your opponent's weapon away. My left arm bears the scars of such efforts, but my opponents bear worse. Better still, do not lose your shield at all. But battles are not a place of perfection. Took so long, I thought my screensaver was going to come on. The city still mourns. Just a guess seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. My Lord Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. They wish to protect the people from us? Protect them from the blasphemous Herald of Andraste, I'd say. Surely they cannot think such a thing. Why not? They wouldn't be the only ones. You think the Order's return to the fold, maybe? To deal with us upstarts? I know Lord Seeker Lucius. I can't imagine him coming to the Chantry's defense. Not after all that's occurred. Return to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As you say, my lady. Okay, well, we finally made it to the summer market of Val Rayo, and I'm going to end this episode here. Um, there was a really long period where I was just waiting for it to end, so I'm going to cut all that. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.